Welcome to Sailing with the Jameses. I'm Kate. And this is Sam. And this is our daughter, Charlie. A couple of months ago, we sold our house and all of our belongings and bought Endless Summer, a 55-foot Bruce Roberts yacht. We are now living on board full-time while we sail around the world. Follow our journey by pressing subscribe. This episode on Sailing with the Jameses. We work on toilet maintenance, give a tour of the engine room, and catch some fish in this episode. Okay, so today we're going to be doing my favorite maintenance, and it's uh, working on a toilet. So I've taken these toilets apart in the past, and um, basically what's happened with this toilet here, everything seems to be functioning okay. I serviced it about a month ago and I replaced all the valves, seals and things like that. And I believe that I didn't tighten up the actual clamp that clamps the piston onto the shaft and the shaft has come out. So I have to take the whole thing apart again to fix uh, it, something that I could have done better the first time. Um, so, in order to catch as many of the uh, products as possible, uh, <laughs> we've got we've a lovely got a, assistant. Assistant, uh, who is we're going to struggle to keep away from all the nasty stuff. Um, we'll put a bucket under there, and this bed sheet is getting a little old, so we're going to sacrifice this to the sheet gods and use it to uh, clean up any messes that we make, and then um, throw it in the bin. So that is the master plan. I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, the worst thing about this problem is uh, I think I'm the one that caused it by not doing it up tight enough to begin with. So it's always a fun job when you know you're the one that made it. But anyway, there we go. <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> so with this here, this is the, the Groco manual pump. And when I take it apart, I'll explain all, all the systems a little better. But in here, these are the valves that I serviced just recently. So there's a, a one-way valve in here. And this is where all the product goes out. The other pipe at the back is the salt water in. There's another one-way valve at the back there with also a ball that's connected to the foot paddle. And when you pump the handle, there's a piston that goes in there that has two uh, Teflon O-rings on it, which we replaced recently. As you pump it back and forward, you pump it forward, the piston goes up, it sucks the salt water in, and then you pump it back. There's also another one-way valve on the top here that we just replaced. And so that there lets the product go in. When it gets compressed, it goes out this one-way valve and either into the holding tank, which is under the floor, or depending on our area of operation, overboard. We mainly do it to the holding tank because the holding tank has a macerator on it, which is better for the environment. So when we do then discharge it, it's macerated properly where this sort of crushes it up, but doesn't really macerate all the good stuff as, as much as we'd like. And that way we're not, we're not uh, doing it when we're swimming and all that kind of stuff as well. The holding tanks on summer are quite large, so we're lucky with that. We can last quite a bit before we've got to go out and dump it. And we've got two of them, one for each toilet. <laughs> All right, and that's the toilet disconnected. So we're going to take it up on deck so we've got a bit more space to pull it apart and clean the parts and take it from there. One thing that's unusual about summer is that. Generally speaking, what will happen is the water that goes into the toilet will go from a skin fitting on the deck, uh, sorry, under the water, in through and straight to the toilet. Here we have another siphon break, so if something breaks or anything happens then, it also goes up above the water line. The problem with that being is I've had to tie that one up as well, just so we don't get as much water spilled throughout the boat. It'll only be a few litres, we could decant it into something, 
but um, yeah, if we do that, it's just a little bit simpler. So we'll clean this up and carry it upstairs and keep having some more fun. Vigorously washing his hands. This is our own little personal White Haven Beach. So, after fixing the toilet all morning, we decided to go ashore and get off the boat for a little bit and uh, have a little bit of fun. And we found these awesome tracks. This is pretty cool. So, we found some turtle tracks. These are turtle tracks right here coming up. So they come out of the water. So you can see it come out, there's the high tide mark. They came out, came all the way up here. The turtle would have come straight to up here to where this circle right there, right in front of this bush. And then they would have come back out this way, the second track out right in front of this V-mark would be um, a clutch of eggs. That's really cool. So, um, yeah, it's um, turtle nesting season, so we're, we're pretty confident that that's a turtle nest. So we're gonna keep our eyes out for other turtle nests and be careful of where we step and everything. So this morning off of End the Summer, we caught three fish. A huge shout out to George and Sharon off of the Cruising Cat. George showed us heaps of tricks with um, fishing and catching fish and it's worked brilliantly because this morning we caught three and today for lunch we are having fried fish. So I've taken the fillets, cut them up on this cutting board here into small pieces, used some breadcrumbs. We got the breadcrumbs from Woolworths, so just the plain Woolworths or Coles brand and rolled them around in the breadcrumbs so they're nice and layered and use some canola oil in the frying pan. We've got a Force 10 gas stove so it's a bit tricky to get the temperatures right on the stove but I've just filled a nice even layer of oil on the bottom, left it for about a minute, it heats up really fast and then taken the pieces of fish and put them in the pan and let each side cook for about three to four minutes until they're a nice golden brown, light golden brown. And then I've taken a piece of towel, a paper towel, and so that the oil drips down and the paper towel catches the oil. But now we have fresh fried fish for lunch. And we are super excited because we love fried fish. Uh, we love fresh fish too. And it does 
wonders for our food budget. So catching these three fish, we're able to have a few fillets. We've got a fillets in the freezer right now, cooling down, and it'll last us two, we, we've fried up quite a bit. It'll last us two to three meals, which is heaps for our food budget. Are you liking the fish? <laughs> She's loving the fried fish. Mm. <laughs> we're so stoked she loves fried fish as well. Mm. Hopefully we're going to eat a lot of it. Mm. It's delicious. Oh, yeah? yeah? <laughs> Today we are working on the engine. So Endless Summer has a 65 horsepower Ford Liam engine and she's a 1987 model. And what we're working on today is the exhaust mixer here. So what happens is the exhaust gases come out here and they mix with salt water in the mixer. The salt water comes in from this intake and it mixes here before it goes to the pong box there. And um, it's the problem we're having is that there's a hole uh, forming on the other side where Sam's hand is. And so we've temporarily patched it with oil absorbs and what was the other thing called? Uh, we used liquid gasket. Liquid gasket. And so before there were some clamps on here holding it in. Uh, to temporarily patch it and then we were just recently on the hard stand so temporarily patched it until we could get a boiler maker in to uh, have a look at it and fix it but unfortunately what she's made out of is cast and cast is a specialty trade um, so the boiler maker didn't wouldn't touch it at all We've called around to a few places. They won't touch cast, so we've run into an issue there. Um, so it's a bit of a specialized trade because when they lay cast, it's a mold um, and there's air bubbles in inside. So when you go to fix it, like heat it up, if you heat up a specific section, you're, you can get little explosions because you're heating up the air bubbles inside. So what you need to do is heat the entire thing up um, and work on it from there. And unfortunately, we couldn't find a boiler maker that specializes in cast iron. So we've gone ahead and we're gonna try to temporarily, permanently fix it with um, some metal uh, putty that should be up to, is up to temperature of what the engine gets. Uh, while we look for a part um, to be shipped. So Endless Summer is originally from the USA. So she was built in Jamarco at the yard in California. So the part that we've found uh, that we are gonna look into organizing is in the US. So it needs to be shipped and we need to make sure that we get the correct part and everything. So while we organize that, we're gonna try to see if we can patch it, um, see if we can temporarily or permanently fix the issue. And for anyone interested, this is our engine room. So we've got the shaft out the back there. That's what, that's, this is what turns, what turns a propeller. Um, when we're steering, we're up in the cockpit and we're steering the wheel. This is Dyneema. This is what we turn, what pulls and pulls uh, the rudder back and forth. So that runs all the way to the back and is attached to the rudder. We've got our hot water system up there. Uh, Endless Summer has a 12 volt and also uh, she's heated by the engine. So we have both 12, uh, 12 volt hot water and also heated by the engine. And we come back to the engine herself. We come to our little helper over there. And then that's Sam over there. And if we look up on this side is a bit higher. There's another shelf and this is our water maker. So we've got a Spectra. Uh, she's called a Extreme Cape Horn water maker. And she does 65, six, 56 liters an hour. So this is her. She's currently pickled. 
Um, we haven't needed to use the water maker on the east coast of Australia just because ports are so close and water is free. We just found that we, we don't need to make it. Uh, we do just fine from port to port. But this is her, she's really handy. Should we go offshore into the blue water? And then we have this Magna sign. This is our inverter. So when we're plugged into shore power, this is what charges our batteries. And then when we are off grid and using our solar panels um, and running the inverter, uh, this is the 240. Um, this is what makes our 240 volt if we need it. So during slipping, we were gonna change the anodes and they ended up being in really good condition. So we've got two brand new anodes on board um, for the next time she's hauled out. But uh, Endless Summer is bonded. So what that means is these green wires here that are attached to all the metal parts. It just basically means that it connects all of them so there's no parts that are negatively or positively charged. They're all equal. So it brings down your chances of having electrolysis down, which eats away your metals. Um, so they're all in good, really good condition. And she's, um, she's got really good wiring in her. And this is engine room. This part right here, this is our C strainer. This part. So the C strainer was also changed while we were on the hard stand or she was cleaned. So that part down there is the salt water intake for the engine. So what that means is that salt water comes in through here. It goes to the C strainer. So that means that the water goes through a strainer. So it takes out any bits, uh, any particles. Then it goes through that tube and it goes to the engine. So that's what a C strainer is. We come over here to the engine. This is the coolant line that comes up. It comes over and that's how we heat our water off the engine. And then we have the returning line on the other side here. Um, these red pipes here, this is the hot water to the boat. Um, so when we take a shower, when we wash our hands, do the dishes, and we turn on the hot water, this is the this is where it's coming from. And then you might have noticed that we have got two fuel filters here. Um, we've got redundancies on board, so actually separate uh, lines. So if anything happens, we can shut down one and use the other. But we do have redundancies there, um, and that's. Uh, one thing that we really liked about Summer when we were looking at her was the redundancies of fuel filters. So if you get anything like water, bad fuel um, in there, we can shut down one and use the other. Up here, this is the engine start battery. And then before, we were showing you that we were putting in the new depth sounder and speed log. These here, and they come up from over there. That goes up into the cockpit and those are all the wires for all the instruments out there. These here, these are for our 12 volt instruments in the, uh, in the cockpit. And these green pipes here, this green pipe here, that green pipe there, that green pipe there, and in the corner here, this green pipe, this is for drainage. So that is the top corner of the cockpit. There, over there, in the corner there and over there. So when we um, wash down and clean the cockpit, uh, that just goes straight through. So you can see it goes straight out and overboard. So it's really good with Charlie. We've got dinner upstairs and if we need to clean up, we just take a bucket of salt water and pour it down and it's easy cleanup. And this is her. And up here, that green uh, equipment there, that is for the refrigeration. So right now the engine room is hot. We're both sweating. 
Um, it's because the refrigeration is, is running. Um, we've got really good insulation, so it's keeping the, uh, the heat in. And on the other side where Sam is, that is the kitchen. Hey! <laughs> so I'm in the, uh, I'm in the, the companion way on the Navia station. Uh, the engine sits in the middle of the boat and, uh, and you can get to it from either side. So the panels do come off in the kitchen and that's where Sam is. Uh, so Sam's just pointed out that I called a boiler maker a boiler maker multiple times and I might have been in Australia too long. So a boiler maker is um, like a welder. So it's someone who fabricates like steel, iron. Yeah. Have I been in Australia too long? I don't think you've been here too long. <laughs> I, mean, I want to keep you forever. So. <laughs> but the, not long enough as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, it, people might not know what a boiler maker is. It's a, it's a slang term we use here in Australia for someone who does welding and make metal fabrication. And um, uh, when I first got to Australia, the name for an electrician is a sparky. That is the typical. So if you're an electrician, you say I'm a sparky. If you're a welder, you say I'm a boiler maker. If you want to go to the liquor store, you say, where's the bottle of? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that will make sense to me. Uh, uh, fun story. When I first got to Australia, I was looking for the liquor store and I asked people and they say, oh, yeah, Liquorland's just down the street. I used to play Candyland when I was a kid and I thought they were making fun of me or, or like pulling my leg. And the liquor store is called Liquorland and I was thinking that it wasn't real because I played the game Candyland and that's a real thing. <laughs> we are headed off from Western Bay at Brampton Island. Last night and for the past three days, we were down there where that white cat is. And last night the winds turned, they were unpredicted and they were actually coming from the west. And we did drag anchor a bit. Summer's been really good. We haven't dragged anchor before. Um, so last night was pretty, pretty ordinary. So we were bucking and kicking and she dragged anchor. We did look at resetting it, but it bit back. Um, so we didn't need to reset it. Um, we were lucky there's only other, one other boat in the bay. So they were far away from us. So we didn't need to worry about them. And the reason we didn't like a westerly blow coming into the western point is because you're getting blown onto land. So you don't ever really want to be anchored in a spot where you're going to be blown onto land. You can get into a lot of trouble like that. You always want to be anchored in a bay opposite the wind. So if you have a wind coming from the north, you want to be anchored in a bay down to the south. So you're being blown off land. Um, that's sort of the way um, everyone does it. And the, um, the tides changed this morning. We're on our way to Airlie Beach. So the anchor bit back and we just thought we'd wait till morning till the tides were favorable. And um, our next destination, next destination is Airlie Beach. And I'll show you the Navionics. So this is Navionics. Brampton Island here is here. This is Western Bay. And this first one is our original, uh, where the anchor was, anchor placement. And this is our swing radius, as you can see. And then last night we, we dragged and then she rebit and then this is our new swing radius. And then we've waited till favorable tides left and we're about we're here and we're headed north to Airlie. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe to follow our journey.